Note, the following episode was recorded on December 10th, 2020. Since that time, due to the current COVID-19 situation, all events of the Southern Tour Ultra, with the exception of the last man standing, were rescheduled from January 2021 to the weekend of April 10th. The last man standing event is still scheduled to start at 7 p.m. on Friday, January 15th. We hope you enjoy the episode. It's it's one of the greatest vibes in the world to have classic rock, a campfire, um, people running, and just everyone's happy out there. And that is what I've seen in ultra runners from the diehard the ultra runners who finish and they give everything they've got and they fall over the finish line to the people who will do anything it takes to finish. They don't care what time it is. Give a huge welcome to the ultra running guys community, Jeremy Reynolds. Jeff Winchester and tonight I am so excited. This is going to be part one of a two-part series about one of our favorite events ever, the Southern Tour Ultra, which will be taking place in January, kicking off on the 15th. Uh, But tonight, (laughs) sorry, we laugh because I say the 15th because that's when the last man starts. Uh, Isn't it awesome? We decided that the last minute, by the way, uh, or the last, uh, like, like, one of my clients said at the last minute, he's like, you know what, you should start that at 7 p.m., not not 6 a.m. I'm like, that's actually a really good idea. So I, I think I know exactly who that was, too. <laughs> yeah. um, who was it? Tim? Yes. Yep. All right, so we'll, we will get on. This is why I'm so excited. <laughs> oh, my God. About, so I'm going to get through this intro. Um, so you've, you've just seen him. We've got with us tonight the race director, Tom Clifford. Anybody in the local area knows Tom. Uh, I think it could be argued probably the most influential person in the running community in Wilmington. For those of you that don't know him, I'm going to give you a kind of a quick rundown introduction, and then and then we'll jump right into it. Um, so Tom, man, you've got a lot of facets. As a runner, uh, you know, for guys like us, it, it's up here. We're talking last year. You said a 2:27 marathon PR, uh, 5K PR, 14:39, which uh, is incredible. Um, not only that, but from a coaching standpoint, had three people that went to the uh, Olympic marathon trials this year. And so without limits is kind of the premier coaching outfit in the area. Uh, you've got multiple businesses. I mentioned without limits. You've also got the runners essential multivitamins and, uh, you know, shakes and stuff that go along with that. And then you do the race directing. Uh, anybody in the Wilmington knows the Wrightsville Beach Marathon. It's kind of the big race. Um, and then recently, uh, along with some other things, have been moving into the ultras, which is what we're super excited about, including Southern Tour. Um, all of that information you can find on IamWithoutLimits.com. Go check it out. There's podcasts, events, all that stuff. We could probably talk forever just about that and about how fast he is and about how fast he is. He's not really like me at all. Used to be. <laughs> I got a long way to recover back from surgery, but yeah, yeah I'll that, be back. That's fair. I hear you, but um, you were on the treadmill just the other day. I think you posted and I think it was a eight or nine minute pace or something like that's my pace. Eight, eight <laughs> so, minute pace. Yeah. You're fast. It's going to be a while. It's, it's, you know what, on that note, it's humbling and I appreciate the intro. I love what we do. Um, the company has um, evolved over the over. You know, we're, we've been in business for 14 years, and you know, over 14 years, you want to keep things fresh, and you want to evolve, and you want to do things that, you know, that inspire people and get people excited. You know, without the people, it's it's not anything. So I think that um, the excitement around. Um, what we do is is the key, and you both are a part of that because you've participated in our event. So I appreciate you having me on. Southern Tour is just, it's, you know, I can explain where the, how that evolved and everything, but if, if that's a question, so. Well, yeah, we're, we're definitely going to get there. Um, <clears throat> but before we do, one of the things that, that, that I find absolutely fascinating about you is, is you are, like I said, incredibly, incredibly fast. Um, and you've got all these accomplishments in all the distances um, up to like marathon. And then I know you also have done some triathlons as well. You're like a, a, I think a world champion as well, if I'm correct. Well, 
third in age group in the 70.3 worlds. So uh, I took, I was top in my age group in the, in the world championship. I was 40th overall in that race at world championships in 2011, in 2012. Yeah, so, so, so yeah. So, endurance athlete. Yeah, you are an endurance athlete. One of the things though that, that is interesting though is you've never actually run a ultra marathon though, right? Not yet. Not yet. So that's the key, right? Because eventually you're going to be out there running one with us, right? Someday. Yeah. <laughs> so how did you make that, that jump? And so how did you go to ultras um, as being one of the races? Like, like you said, the Southern Ultra is one of the largest things over here on the East Coast um, of North Carolina, right? And it's a huge running festival. It's been going on since 2016. Um, how did you make that jump to doing an ultra as a race director? It's a great question. I, I have not done an ultra. I've actually ran the distance um, just on a training run. So, but I'll never count that as an official 50 K. Um, it's just one of those things where you got to actually do the event in order to, you know, it, it, for it to be real. But I went to a race, the knock on wood without limits running festival in Greenville, South Carolina, put on by, um, one of our coaches, Matt, Matt Hammersmith, who's an ultra guru. And he and I went there and I stayed up all night long with him in this very first ultra event. And we, we were just, we were having a good time. We were playing music. It was completely grassroots. You know, it was, um, there was probably like 15, 20 people camping and it was a two mile course on a trail. Nice. You know, at Lake Conesty Park in Greenville, South Carolina. And I just, I just had a blast. I'm like, there were so many things that went wrong at that first race and I wasn't directing it or anything. I just, Matt, you know, was, he had it all set up and we just, he was, you know, Matt has come a long way, but I think it was just kind of, we were all winging it and we were just having a good time. We were writing times, lap times on a whiteboard yeah. and we stayed up all night and, and watched, you know, people run 24 hours, two mile loops. And I looked at these people and I'm like, this is a really cool crowd. You know, this is a different crowd that shows up from your normal like marathon or half marathon road event. And I had already started, you know, the Wilmington, the Wrightsville Beach Marathon slash Wilmington Marathon. So that had already been kind of, you know, festering and where we're trying to grow that. Um, but when Southern Tour came about, it was an idea that a concept that came from this looped course idea um and the age group uh, uh the team age grading system came actually from the idea from the great lakes relay in michigan and so both matt's race and that we kind of just put together and the great lakes relay sort of you know you 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 every product um, in 2020 has probably been created, but then products are, you know, made better and, you know, created to conform to the, to the new era. You know what I mean? Like I kind of improved, you, you take old, you take old things and you, you make them better. And so the great lakes relay was this relay that started in Alpena, Michigan, which is just North of the thumb. And it raced three days across the state of Michigan and ended at Empire, which is where the uh, Sleeping Bear Dunes is, uh, which is a big huge sand dune um, state park in, in Michigan. And the teams would race across the state. It would be 10 person teams, but they age graded all, the whole race um, based on the same age rating system, similar to what we do. So it was really fun. So those two concepts kind of developed the Southern Tour. Yeah, and so I just want to kind of put some context for people that haven't been to Southern Tour. Um, what he's talking about is you've got your kind of traditional ultra, you know, distances. You've got a 50 mile uh, event, a 50K event, but what really draws a lot of the crowd, and I think we'll kind of dig into this more in, in just a little bit, but you've got a 50 mile team relay. And I think that that's where a, a lot of your crowd really comes out, of, um, you know, comes out for. So, it sounds like you took that concept, mixed it with what you found, you know, with Hammersmith 
uh, and Upstate Ultras, which we've been to, you know, some of his races and those are a great time uh, and a great dude, but kind of took the two of those, put them together. And so was Southern Tour, was it, hey, Ultras are getting bigger and I want to do something like that? Or was it like, was it really the clicking of, hey, I think I could take those two things and put on something that would be a great time? I think it started um, more or less with we wanted to do something small and fun that didn't have a whole lot of over um, oversight. You know what I mean? Like if you compare a Wilmington marathon to a Southern tour, um, you got to get police, you got to get all these things. There's a lot of stuff that goes into that event compared to Southern tour where the initial idea was, Hey, everybody can show up in a big grass field and we're going to do a race. But, you know, the, the years went by and of course it evolved into a lot more than that, you know, it right. evolved into a camping scene and then, you know, Friday night barbecue. And then, you know, people started, you know, wanting more and having a good time. So we had to get bonfire supplies. And so it's a whole new concept that, that has become much, much more work that I really actually look forward to a whole week in the woods. You know, I, I really can't trade that for anything else in the world because it's it's um, it's really a blessing to be able to go out there and, and just simply set the course up and go out there and just just be in nature. But um, but yeah, you know, it it's um, it has evolved in, into something a lot bigger than we initially thought. But yeah, yeah. I mean, one of the things you touched on earlier, you said that when you had the experience at Lake Conesty, the, you, you kind of observed these ultra running uh, runners in their community and how they were a little bit different than the typical road community as well of road runners. Um, so you've been doing Southern tour for five years now and More than um, five. This has been six years. Yeah. Yeah. Six. Yeah. Six. This year will be coming six up, year, yeah. coming up on mm -hmm. six. Yeah. yeah. I think um, so. so in the, in the five years that it's been held, you, um, you've observed a lot of ultra runners um, in those events, not just the relay runners, but the ultras, because you, you started with the 50K and now it's got the 50 miler. And obviously we're going to talk about the last main standing as, as well. That's just been added in for this upcoming year. But what's something that has stood out um, about just observing ultra runners in general um, through the, your, I guess, race directing experience with them? Well, certainly the perseverance, um, no matter how size, shape, um, pace, uh, the perseverance of, of ultra runners are, um, is, a, is astounding and, and very inspiring. Um, you know, I've seen guys push, you know, to try to, to try to get the fastest time. And then I've seen people who they're one of the last people, but they will not give up. Even if we're breaking down, um, they, they want to finish no matter what. And, uh, I've gone back on courses it's pitch black outside. Um, you can't see anything out there on, on that course. And there's a woman, she's got four miles to go and she's, she says, Hey, how you doing? It's great to see you. And you know, I'm, I'm doing fine. I'm, I, if, can I, can I, can I finish? And I go, absolutely. You know, I mean, I will, I, what am, how am I going to say no to that? You know what All I mean? Right. And, um, and, you know, you just don't clean those arrows up. You just wait. And uh, you wait for those people so they can finish the course. And, and it's really inspiring to see, um, especially when they come into the field and there's a bunch of people drinking beers, hanging around the fire, and they're all just like, they turn around and they go, yeah! You know, it's just, <laughs> it, you just can't beat that vibe. You can't, you really can't beat it. Um, it's, it's one of the greatest vibes in the world to have classic rock a campfire um people running and just everyone's happy out there and that is what i've seen in ultra runners from the diehard the ultra runners who finish and they give everything they've got and they fall over the finish line to the people who will do anything it takes to finish they don't care what time it is of the day and that community of people that that uh coercion of um, of runners from the, the elites to the last is incredible. And it's a really cool vibe and it's laid back. Nobody in the ultra community, they don't complain much. You know what I mean? 
it's very, it's very, you hear very few complaints. Like one year in Southern tour, we had um, snow on the ground for a week in Wilmington. Imagine that we're in Southeastern North Carolina where the average temperature in the winter is in the fifties. And we had snow on the ground for a week. And then the day before Southern tour happened, there was a severe thunderstorm warning. It was 70 degrees. And we had torrential downpours, four to six inches of rain. And then the next day at Southern tour, it was 50. Like that's, that's the way the frontal system and the, and the boundaries were, were, were playing that day. And the ground was disgusting. The car, cars got stuck. We had to delay the race. People had to walk in. But guess what? Nobody complained. Jeff, you were there that year, right? I think that was 2018, maybe? Yeah, 2018. Yeah, yeah only, I only missed 2017. I think 2018 was the mud. 2018, 2019 was, was the year I loved 2019. I, I did a 50K, but um, 2019 was the first year you had the 50-mile option. And, um, and it was just interesting because, you know, obviously, uh, Michelle Fogel, who's, you know, um, a lot of people know her. She came in second that year. I think she ran like 751. Um, when I look yeah. back at the results, she had an incredible, incredible race. And she was only like seven or eight minutes off of first place. But first and second place were over an hour ahead of the third place finisher that year. And those two people, I mean, Michelle and Keith were flying um, for a 50 miler. And it was just for me, when the, as a first time option of a 50 mile race, to see it at the Southern Ultra and see somebody putting down incredible times like that, just from local runners that we knew, was a really impressive thing for me. And and it was muddy, like it was a bad, bad course um, for that time. And um, it was very impressive year. It was. So, and that's what we see. We just see constant resilience in the, the ultra runners. And, and of course, there's the vibe, you know, the vibe of the camping and the, the, the teams being around. And you just, the, the, I think the difference between the um, Southern Tour and many other events is that you have the ultra events um, going on while you have the relayers who maybe aren't so ultra marathonish, and but they they observe it and and it kind of gets it that bug in their brain of hmm maybe maybe this is something I could do someday. That that's actually one thing that I was going to mention, or it kind of went into a question of why do you think that people are being more open to it? But Southern Tour has that's part of the magic of it, I think. Um, so Southern Tour was actually Jeff's first ultra 50K. It was the first one in 2016 that I participated in, but I ended up just doing part, I did 20 miles of the relay. Uh, but what's so unique, I think, about the event is you get people that wouldn't normally be at an ultra event that are doing the relay, that are watching people do it. And I think to the way that people used to think only freaks did marathons and now tons of people do marathons, I think ultras are starting to turn into that. Are you seeing that? Um, just kind of, I guess, people starting to think, hey, that's not just, you know, for the crazies anymore, but it seems like people are starting to get a lot more open, obviously, as the world we live in, but are you seeing the same thing from a directing standpoint? Yeah, I kind of think it starts with the Copperhead um, race. Uh, have, you, have you guys done Copperhead? I have not been out there. I've heard great things about it. So, okay, we can, since we're going to segue onto that a little bit, I have not done it because um, I don't drink. But then I heard this past year that you are allowed to do milk in the um, laps. Yes. And I was like, oh, okay, sure. well, I can go drink some chocolate milk and try not to puke. So <laughs> probably this year coming up. <laughs> so, so Copperhead kind of differentiates between the two because you do you can drink beer prior to your lap. And it's a 5K. It's a 20K, 4 by 5 k and you can drink a, drink a beer before your lap. So it adds this – um, this crowd of people who really just they're 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 kind of the, the hobby jogger exerciser because they know they get to drink beer right and they, they have to run a pretty tough course i mean it's not an easy day you know you got this last year it was um 2020 was it was 90 degrees humid it was the hottest day we had you know and um you know, and you, you, we had to have some mud running. So it kind of transpires from that. And then we, we had the same Southern tour concept at Shikori 40. Um, and this, you know, and, and, and this year brought out a whole new crowd in Raleigh because nothing was going on in the Raleigh Durham area, nor Greensboro or Charlotte. And, and the Pittsburgh is very centralized to Greensboro, Charlotte and Raleigh. So it brought in, you know, we had 600 athletes at that race and many, many have never done a trail event 
um, order relay event like that, where you had a loops relay and you had a pass a baton. And man, they just, they loved it. You know, Southern tour has, has kind of, has been the pinnacle of the races of how, how we're, um, you know, kind of surrounding the, this community of bringing people in that can, can definitely run 5k to 10k on a trail. It's not so daunting. And then they see, well, gosh, you know, maybe one year I want to do the individual. So down the line, it, 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 that, that poke is there, you know, right. that they may want to do the whole thing down the line, but you know, some people may not, you know? And so it's just, it does take a special person to do an ultra marathon. You know, you have to be excited about it. You have to be willing to train for it. Um, you have to be willing to be out there all day and to suffer and, you know, not be really in the party scene as well. You know, I think that's the difference is that a lot of people who come to these events, they want to party all day and they want to run their five mile leg and be done. Whereas the ultra runners are like, I want to do the ultra. You know what I mean? So I think it just really depends on where a person is in their life. Depends on, you know, how they are, you know, trained or what they're willing to sacrifice. But, you know, that, that's why it's uh, the best of both worlds, you know? Yeah, I think the, um, the relay runners in the beginning, like when you first start your 50K, they, um, because they're running so much faster by you, it's so hard to maintain your pace because you're like, let's all run fast because <laughs> they're like booking past you. And so you're like, let's go fast. And you're, you're trying to slow yourself down the whole time. It's gotta be nice for you guys out there who are doing the ultra to have company. I take it. It's good to have energy. It's good to have energy out there. One of the things I think from um, the past couple of years, one of my favorite things is about how we've ended now where you've got more of a corral at the end and you go through the end field of where people are. Um, and it's kind of like you pop out in the woods and you've got this finish and, and being uh, um, one of the local people, I've been here forever. It feels like in Wilmington, I just know a lot of the, a lot of the runners out there. And so they, you, they just kind of encourage you coming through it. And it's really cool. Um, and at that part, you're like flying into the fi finish type thing. And so it's, uh, um, it's good to have all the people out there. So I guess a question for you guys. I know it's your show. If you don't mind me asking a question. How does a, a race like Southern Tour compare against your general ultra, standalone ultra event? I would say for me, it really captures, that's one of the reasons I love it. It captures the energy. And I think that the relay brings that energy um, only because like you talked about, there is a spot where you can kind of hang out all day and there is constant kind of churn right there. People are cheering because all the relays are coming through. Uh, obviously, just like you said, um, kind of in Matt's event, a lot of the other big ones, there is an energy there, but it's not so... Um, Yes, yeah. dispersed. I don't know. Uh, so I've done um, a variety of them, I guess. I think that to me, the advantage the, the Southern Ultra has, I think, over a lot of others um, is not just, it's, it's the infield. Um, the infield provides not really just for the runner, but for like the crew. Um, like if my wife or family members go to, to crew me at a different race, um, there's not a lot of opportunities for them to have, um, I hate to say, things to do. Things to do um, unless they're going to try to travel from one aid station to the next following me along the course. Um, and even then, they're like a, a just a moving little campsite, right? But at Southern Ultra, they can kind of stay in their one spot because um, the first couple of years, particularly when it was a five-mile loop, um, they were going to see me, you know, every hour type, type thing. And with the 10-mile loop, they don't see me quite as often. But because you have the infield set up like it is, they still have so much activity going on around them and other runners coming through. It's just, it's a better environment for crew experience, um, for one thing, which is really from a runner's perspective, it's, it's vital that my family enjoys being there and how, you know, being, otherwise they're not going to want me to do as many ultras. And so that to me is one of the strengths of it, that it's different than a lot of other ultras because of the way it's designed um, to have so many people um, doing the relays and other things. To piggyback on that though, like we just did, you know, Halloween Hobble, which is an awesome event. That was fantastic. Um, it was a, it, that was a four-mile loop. Combs, baby. Yeah. It was fantastic. Yeah. But, um, you know, from an energy perspective, right, because I did the 24-hour event, and they had like a four-mile, so you come through kind of the first one, and people are cheering. But when you're three hours into a 12-hour, 24, every time you come through, people aren't really paying attention, right? The energy isn't – it's not like people are clapping you every lap because you've got nine hours, 20 hours to go where with Southern Tour, every time uh, a relay person is coming through, uh, for me, it's just the easier energy to feed up. It's not, not, not even necessarily better because it was both 
were really fun. But I think that that's where Southern Tour, it just feeds on itself. It's a strength all day. It is. It's it definitely is a strength area of the tour. And yeah. like well, you it'll said, it'll be interesting to see with the last man standing how that how that plays out. You know, with with you guys can, having run, you know, all night long with the people showing up at seven a.m. I'm sure that'll be something to look forward to. Is that people will be showing up, you know, in the morning um, when you're twelve hours in. Uh, yeah, so that's actually exactly what I said when I heard about the move to seven o'clock. Um, and, and obviously it's changed a little bit as far as the timing and the loops and those kind of things. Um, but yeah, that's exactly what I said. Cause at first it was like, okay, so if we start now we go into night, a lot of the energy dies off, but if we start the night before, hopefully right as things start getting kind of daunting, the sun comes up, you have all the energy from the races. And I think just from a longevity standpoint, that's really going to help out that event. Um, and I'm excited about that piece of it. Do you, do you want to like for the listeners, tell them what the last man standing is? Yeah. So <laughs> you should probably tell them. Yeah. So, you know, this year we talked about the kind of the evolution of the race started out as the 50 K in the relay added a 50 mile event. Well, this year it's the first last man standing and anybody that's familiar with uh, the backyard format um, and there's other last man standing races. The bottom line is you line up every, in this case, it's going to be 70, 75 minutes, something in there. Tim, Tim told me you might still be working on the timing. Well, I want to make it so that it, it lines up with the backyard ultra um, ratio. I, I'm, I'm totally on board with all that. Awesome. Um, so we want to make it so that you will finish the, it's a 5.25 mile course. And I'm not going to change that for the, the last man standing. I want to make it so that you guys have to run the 5.2 mile, five mile course, the same course as the relay teams. Um, so if I just, I need to get the exact calculation of how uh, you guys running 5.25 miles and finishing a hundred miles just under 24 hours or at 24 hours. 75.6 minutes. Is that what it is? Yeah. Yes. You figured it out already? Yeah. Oh yeah. I love you guys. Thank you. Yeah. So, and I even chatted with Colin about it a little bit. Now I'm going way into a side, <laughs> right? But um, ladies I mean, and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, these guys are my friends right now. <laughs> So, but I mean, obviously 75 minutes probably makes his life easier than 75.6 minutes, but um, that's pretty close. But bottom line, line up every 75 minutes, you do a loop. Um, and if you finish in 70 minutes, you got five minutes to rest, that kind of thing. And then you just keep lining up until there's one person that finishes. Um, and so it can go for five hours. It can go for 40 hours. It just really depends on having two strong people. So that's the concept. Um, so I'm interested, Tom, like kind of what brought that about or what made you think, hey, let's throw this into the mix? Yeah, for sure. Um, well, thanks for asking. Well, a lot of times in the without limits practice, um, the practices, we do a lot of things on the clock. All right. So um, before the backyard ultra took place, um, again, I go back to Hammersmith and I, we were, we were drinking beers. Uh, at his house during Christmas. And we came up with this concept, both of us together. We're like, let's do a marathon 2.6 miles every 40 minutes. You know? Carolina and, Reaper. Huh? Carolina, Carolina Reaper. Reaper. Yeah. So three days after we're drinking beers, and I hope he listens to this and laughs, He's like, yeah, yeah, we should do this together, like on the same day. I'm like, okay, you know, that sounds good. I got to go back and line things up. Well, by the time I got home, basically by the time I got back to Wilmington, he had already had Carolina Reaper up. I'm like, dude, what are you like? Okay, I guess you're doing it. Fine, no problem. So, and I love Matt. Like he, you know, he's he's enthusiastic like me, and and we we mesh in many ways. So, you know, so he started Carolina Reaper, um, which is 2.62 miles. Uh, at, you know, every 40 minutes, 10 times, which is a marathon. So it's just a kind of a cool concept. And um, uh, the backyard ultra concept came and I'm like, you know what, we could definitely do that at Southern Tour. It's just another option um, for people to take this cool challenge, you know, to um, see who's going to last, you know, and it's really more of a burden on me. Honestly, I have to stay up now. You know, I, I don't have to add these things. I want to add these things because it's, it adds so much value and fun to the event. And people are like, are you doing the 50 mile? Yeah. 
I'm doing the 50 mile this year. I'm doing the 50K this year. I'm a new, it's almost like the 50K is not, not to down the, downplay the 50K, but the 50K is like the intro at Southern Tour. You do yeah. the 50K, then you're like, okay, I'm going to tackle the 50 mile. And then, you know what? I'm going to be the psychopath that does the last man standing and start at 7 p.m. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run all night long. And, you know, right now we have 11 participants signed up, which I think is, a, is pretty damn good. You know, we have Jeremy Reynolds is the, one of the first person who registered, who's the head of the podcast. I was going to say, I, it came out and I was like, doop. <laughs> so, you know, for, for me, it's, it's, um, it's not what's going to, um, like, make more money at all. It's more, for me, it's what's going to be exciting it's what's going to be value to the event. The event. I I love watching this stuff, and and I know someday I'll participate. I want to do the last man standing one day, but just not going to be my own race. And it's not going to be this year. <laughs> well, and I'll say I'll come out and just say thank you for adding it to the event. It's the kind of thing, um, you know. So what kind of got me into ultras in the first place was when I heard somebody ran a hundred miles. I didn't believe it. It was like. I couldn't wrap my head around it. Mm. And then when I realized lots of people are doing this, it made me look into it. I'll be honest, one of my real hopes for last man standing is that when people show up to run the relays and there's a group out there and they, you know, they start going, wait, they've been running since when? Right. And hopefully, you know, we're going throughout the day that people's mind will kind of open up and they start asking the questions like, I didn't think that this happened or, you know, hopefully it'll, it'll continue that growth or just kind of that mindset that we've been talking about. Um, Me too. Yeah. I think you're going to have limits. Yeah, I mean, I think... that's the whole, my whole idea of the company is you're never, ever like, all right, let's say, let's say you PR in the mile and you're like, well, my mile days are behind me. Okay. Well, maybe you can't PR on the mile anymore, but you can PR on the 5k. All right. My 5k days are behind me. All right. Well, let's PR in the half marathon. All right, well, I've done enough half marathons. My half marathon days are behind me. All right, well, let's try the marathon. Okay, I've done a marathon. So you can keep going longer. You get up to this 50K, and you get up to the 50 mile, right? And, you're, and then you get up to the 100K and the 100 mile. So you can keep going longer, and what are your limits at those distances? You know, and, it, and without limits isn't just a distance thing or a time thing. It's a mindset. You know, it's it's – are you limited and can you embrace the challenge of your limits? And, you know, so last man standing, well, there's really no time limit, you know, it's just, can you finish and then restart at an hour and 15 minute marker? You know, you don't have to be the fastest or, you know, the strongest, you just have to be able to last. And a lot of that's mental. You know, we all, we, you and I both know that. Yeah, I'm just curious. Um, so, um, like you said, you were talked into starting at 7 p.m. on Friday nights and stuff. What do you, when you kind of envision these 11 people, let's say it gets up to 15 or even 20 people, what do you anticipate the event to look like? And I'm going to even ask the weird question because he's running it. How long do you think it's going to last? I think someone's going 150 miles. Hmm? Right. Well, it's got to be two, right? I mean, you got to get yeah, two. To, to get that I, think, far. I think two people are going to battle it out, and I think it's going to go past 140 miles. I think it's going to go that. I think it's going to go through into the next day, which, again, I said is tougher for me. <laughs> you know, for sure. But, uh, so that's that, okay. What time does that put you at? 7 a.m. Sunday morning to get to 150 miles. Yeah. Yep. 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 And so we're super excited because, uh, you know, we mentioned Tim Hamilton, who I know you coach. Um, the dude is tough as nails. He just yeah. went to the 30-hour event. We're actually going to be bringing him and Drew Combs at a minimum on for part two of this because both those guys are competing. Heck, yeah. Let's, let's, let's hype it up, you know. I mean, this is what it's all about, you know. I mean, it, so right now we got Lus Lee, Russ Leaptrot, Ryan Manger, James Honeycutt, Drew Combs, Malia Tomolo, Todd Fisher, Tim Hamilton, Tyler Peak. Keith Goshorn, Cody Brace, and Jeremy Reynolds. Those yeah. are the folks who are in the race. I don't know if you recognize any of those names. but Yeah, um, I recognize Todd Fisher. He's run a few um, of the Southern Ultra. And Tyler Peak, he has run all over um, North Carolina and, and Ultras. He just does an Ultra probably once a month. Yeah, I, and I honestly, I think, you know, and this is where it gets a little bit different. Um, 
everybody's there to compete, but I think that the stronger group of runners we have, just the better it is for the event overall. Mm -hmm. And it helps everybody kind of figure out their limits. Uh, Cause obviously the stronger group we have, the longer it'll go. I'm, I'm thrilled that you guys have such a great following and a podcast and, and this whole realm of endurance sports, because I think endurance sports really, they, they carve people into who they are. I mean, it's just, it's a great, um, it's a great sport to be in, especially as an individual person. You don't, you don't really have to be part of a team while that's great. You know, if you, you can be part of a groups and teams and, and stuff like that, but endurance sports really do um, create the human experience, you know, in one event that transfers into life experience, you know? So uh, I try to tell people that all the time, like, why, well, why do you do this stuff? You know, why would you do that? Why would you run a 50 K? Like, I'm like, the minute you do it and you accomplish it and you realize that you were able to overcome all those um, demon thoughts during that 50K that you wanted to quit and you weren't sure you could do it and da 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 da, da like that is what creates the human experience. And that's why people do this stuff, you know, um, and it transfers into, you know, when, when life gets tough, when work gets tough, when relationships get tough, you remember you were able to overcome um, that experience in the ultra and that you can do the same thing in your general life. I think it's so well said. Um, I've, I've really, really enjoyed tonight. Uh, we'll, we'll probably go ahead and, and kind of wrap things up. But um, Tom, I, I want to thank you. If you're watching this, if you're not signed up for Southern Tour, just get signed up, come out. We've got friends up in uh, New Jersey and Pennsylvania, and it's not that cold down here. Right? It might get chilly, but it's not that cold. Come down, make the vacation, and sign up for Southern Tour. Uh, check out IamWithoutLimits.com. Uh, great information. Tom's got his own podcast. A lot of great stuff on there. And then uh, join us for next time when we talk to some of the runners doing the last man standing, including mm -hmm. myself, and we'll get some kind of runner perspective on this event. So with that, Tom, thanks, brother. We really appreciate you showing up tonight. Thank you. Good luck, guys. Yeah, thanks thank so much for inviting me on. Yeah, man. All right. And cut. How short I am. <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> They're in the room at 6 a.m. going, sure. Dad, 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 Dad. What are we doing today? What are we doing today? <laughs> it's all about you. Yeah, yeah. If we could just talk about me all the time, that'd be fantastic. Okay. Put on the Southern Tour hat for the for the for the podcast. I'm wearing the shirt, so. Dude. So. <laughs> I'm just dressed up. <laughs> Edit out all the ums and the does and the uh. <laughs> Just skip through this because we already got a good one. <laughs> we, like 15 miles out and had to run 15 miles back to the battleship. It was so stupid. <laughs> so dumb. Oh, that's perfect. Road surface road destroyed for many years. You're at 15th or it's coming up. It's a 16th, by the way. It's a 15th. It's a 16th. For you, 16th for everybody else. It starts on the 15th. Not really. Like Tim's plan for the last man standing was a it was a riot, and of course I won't share it with you because you're his competitor. Way to build engagement <laughs> with yourself. But I'm doing well. <laughs> <laughs> Winner. So let's see. So we should call in because it's one minute away. I'm, we're, we are in the meeting. Oh. <laughs> <laughs>